Now let's talk about complex trusts. So complex trusts, again, these are irrevocable trusts. They have their own EIN. They have to file a 1041 uh, income tax return every year. However, with a complex trust, there is no mandatory distribution of income. Okay, so here the big difference between a complex trust and a simple trust is that complex trust, there are no rules for mandatory distribution of income. And typically when we set up trust for our clients, we do it this way for asset protection purposes, because if there are instructions that the income must be distributed every year to, to the beneficiaries, once the beneficiaries receive that money, it's open to creditors and it's open to uh, lawsuits or uh, divorces, stuff like that. So that's why we, when we work with our clients, we don't set them up as simple trust, as mandatory distributions, because you're destroying the asset protection feature of the trusts. So again, that's something to consider. You know, if you have a client that has a trust with mandatory distributions, again, that's, it's defeating the asset protection element of the trust. So that's something that should be considered and revisited. So the non-grantor trust tax regimes, uh, again, for complex trusts, again, they have, their, they, have, they have to file their 1041, just like the simple trust, they have their own EIN. However, you have to balance the pros and cons of the income taxation of trusts with the, with the other elements. So one of the disadvantages of having complex trusts is the compressed income tax brackets like I have there at the bottom, okay? So uh, trust income tax, taxation, their scale, just like they are for individuals. So the current uh, trust income tax brackets are 10%, 24%, 35%, and then they max out at 37%. However, at only $13,000 of income. So at $13,000 of income, the trust is already at the max tax bracket, and that's a huge disadvantage. So when uh, we design our trust for their clients, we have to be very careful attention to this. Yes, irrevocable trusts have a lot of benefits outside of taxation. However, we have to look at the tax portion. If they're gonna be paying 37% taxes at only $13,000 of income, again, these are 2021 figures, we have to balance that out with the other uh, benefits of having the trust. Okay, so again, this is a big eye opener. Wow, I'm at the max tax bracket at only $13,000 of income. Yeah, we have to be careful of that. Okay, now that's $13,000 of undistributed income. So if the income wasn't distributed, again, we're gonna look at some examples in a minute, then the trust has to pay uh, 37% at only $13,000 of income. In addition, the trust, are also, the trust income is also subject to the NIC tax, the net investment income tax, all right, of 3.8%. So practically speaking, it's a 41% tax at the max tax bracket. So again, uh, it may be a non-issue if, if the beneficiary is already at the max tax bracket, which is very typical for our clients. So whether, whether you, whether it gets taxed at the individual level, if they're already at the max tax bracket, then it doesn't matter. However, if the beneficiary is not at the max tax bracket at their individual level, then it may make sense to make that distribution of income. But again, everyone's different. We have to look at going back to the benefits chart. We need to look at, uh, at the beneficiary's individual situation. Do they need asset protection against lawsuits? Are they going through a divorce and we don't want this money to be lost in a divorce? Are they squandering money in a business venture that they're, that they're being irresponsible with and we don't want money to go down the drain? So again, we have to look at the different elements of why the trust was set up to begin with, and we have to balance these benefits with the income tax issues of the trust. Do we want the trust to pay 37% plus the need tax? Well, yeah, maybe it's worth it if we're, we're trying to protect the beneficiary from lawsuits and creditors or divorce and maybe going to. So again, uh, this is a, one of the very important eye-openers of complex trusts is, is the max tax bracket at only $13,000 of income. So here's a citation on, under the Internal Revenue Code. Here's a rule, it's uh, six, uh, 641B. And this rule dictates in what order the distribution must be made. Okay, so let's say you, you know your client, they have a trust, and they're gonna make a distribution this year. And they say, okay, I wanna make a distribution of $1,000. Okay, the IRS has certain rules of priority of how that $1,000 is gonna be categorized. And this is very important, all right? 
Take notes, slide number 13. This is one of the most important slides when you prepare that 1041, all right? When a distribution is made, and we're gonna go over a couple of examples right now, the IRS will say the following. The first money that comes out of the trust is gonna be considered income, and it's gonna be taxable at the, at the uh, beneficiary's individual tax rate. So no principal can be distributed unless all the income has been distributed in that year. So the, the rule is, when a distribution is made from the trust, the IRS is gonna consider it a distribution of income first taxable at the beneficiary's individual tax rate. Next in line are dividends. Ne next in line after that are capital gains. And then finally, after that, it will be considered a distribution of principal. Very important rule. Okay, so when your client receives that, distri that distribution and you're, and you're preparing that, that 1041, you have to look at this rule, in Internal Revenue Code 641. The distribution is made, it's first considered a distribution of income. Secondly, it's going to be considered, if all the income has been distributed, then it's going to be considered a distribution of dividends. After all dividends and income have been distributed, it will be considered a distribution of capital gains. Once those three criteria are met, then and only then would be it considered a distribution of principal, not subject to taxation. Okay, so we're going to look at a couple of examples right now of how that works. So a complex trust, uh, they can accumulate income. There's no mandatory distributions and they get a $100 annual exemption, okay? Now, like I mentioned uh, before, beware of taxation at the state level of non-grantor trusts. Here in Texas, we don't have state taxation. However, if your client is a trustee or a beneficiary and if the trust is set up in another state, you have to check with that state's rules. So for example, in California, they have state taxation of trust. So you have to be, you have to verify where, where does the beneficiary live? Where does the trustee live? Where, where is the trust set up? And check that state's rules to see if you have to file an income tax return for the trust at the state level in that state. However, here in Texas, we don't have uh, taxation at the state level. Let's look at an example here, all right, to illustrate how this works. So we have the ABC trust, uh, let's say it had $10,000 of principal in 2020 and it had $1,000 in net rental income. All right, so 10,000 is principal, $1,000 was net income after expenses, okay? And the trustee wants to make a distribution of $2,000 to the trust beneficiary in year 2020, which was last year. So in this example, the trust has $10,000 of principal. It made a distribution of $1,000 of net rental income. Okay, great. $2,000 was, was distributed to the beneficiary. So under, under this example, the beneficiary is going to report $1,000 of taxable income in their individual 1040 for, for uh, year 2020 at their own tax rate. The other $1,000 is going to be a non-taxable distribution of trust principal. Why? Again, let's go back to the statute. 641B says no principal can be distributed unless all the income for the year has been distributed, followed by dividends, followed by capital gains taxes. Once those three have been satisfied, then it'll be considered a distribution of principal, which is non-taxable. All right. So again, the trust only had a, a, a thousand dollars of income last year in 2020. They made a distribution of a two thousand dollars to the beneficiary. Therefore, $1,000 is taxable at the beneficiary's uh, individual income tax level in the 1040. The other $1,000 will be considered a non-taxable distribution of, of principal because in this example, there was no capital gains and there was no dividend income, all right? So uh, the distribution of income, again, that is paid in the individual's 1040. Here's another rule uh, under the Internal Revenue Code. Uh, the citation is there, 663B. If a trust distribution is made within the first 65, 65 days of any taxable year, so basically January and February, it, be, it can be considered as paid in the last day of the preceding taxable year. So for example, again, in, uh, this example, let's say the distribution was made in January, 2021, it could be considered as a distribution during the year 2020 under the code. All right. So again, you have a 60, the first 65 days of the calendar year, it can be considered taxable in the pre preceding tax year. 
Uh, again, uh, income for distribution purposes is, is the amount of income that the trust document determines under state law. So that's something that I, that I mentioned earlier when we talked about simple trust. Look at state law and look at the trust instrument, the trust document to be what is considered income. So, for example, under Texas law, capital gains taxes, capital gains are considered principal. Okay, so capital gains would not be considered income under this example. Again, trust, there, there's deductions allowed for necessary expenses, just similar to businesses. And uh, an, another important element here is the trust can deduct the distribution of income and made to the beneficiaries within certain limits. So the trust will deduct, will deduct the income it distributed to the beneficiaries when the trust files its 1041. So for in this example uh, that I just gave you, the ABC trust here, the, the distribution of $2,000, well, $1,000 was a distribution of income, so it's gonna deduct that in its ten, in the trust 1041, all right? So in essence, in the, under this example, the trust is not gonna pay any income taxes uh, under 10, 1041 because, because this trust distributed all the income. So there will be no income at the trust level at the, at the, with the trust 1041 under this example. Why? Because it distributed all the income. So that's what this says. The trust can deduct the distribution under Internal Revenue Code 661. Again, there are some certain limits there if, if you uh, look at the code provision. Here's another example of taxation of a complex trust. All right, so in, the, in this example, let's say the APC trust has $100,000 in principal last year in 2021, I'm sorry, in 2020, and they made and had $5,000 in net rental income. So again, assume after expenses and everything. So let's say the trustee, they wanna make a distribution of $1,000 to the beneficiary in, in the year 2020. Okay, so it had $5,000 of income, $100,000 of principal, and they only distributed $1,000. Okay, fine. In this example, the beneficiary, when they received that $1,000 distribution, they paid under in their individual 1040 at their own income tax rate. However, that $4,000, of undistributed income is gonna be taxable to the trust and it's when it files as 1041. All right, so that $4,000 of undistributed income in this example, the trust is gonna to have to pay that tax as an undistributed income. Remember the compressed trust income tax rates, they max out at 37% at only $13,000 of income. Okay, so be careful. And again, if the beneficiary is already at the max tax bracket, it doesn't matter. However, if, if the beneficiary's personal tax bracket is much lower, then it may make sense to distribute that income so that you're paying less, your clients are paying less income taxes. Okay, so again, in this example, $100,000 of principal, $5,000 of net income, the trust makes a distribution of only $1,000. That four thousand dollars is, is going to be paid by the trust in, in its ten forty one. All right, so any undistributed income will be paid by the trust at those compressed income tax uh, brackets, compressed income tax rates. 